So we're here in Cambridge at the Raspberry Pi Foundation with Carrie Ann Philbin. Carrie Ann is Director of Education for Raspberry Pi. She's one of CAS's board members. She chairs CAS Include and also runs this amazing YouTube channel, Geek Girl Diaries. We're going to spend some time this afternoon talking around this, this gender issue in computing education. Carrie-Ann, it's great to be here. Thank you very much for having us. So there seems at least a perception that computing is less popular with girls than it is with boys. Certainly when it comes to GCSE and A-level, the numbers taking these qualifications, there's far fewer girls doing these exams than there are boys. Why would this be the case? I mean, this is definitely true. You know, this is not perception. Mm. Um, we can tell that there are girls who are not excited about computer science, not excited about STEM subjects in general. There's lots of data to show this. Um, and it's, a, it's such a wider cultural issue that it's really difficult to just dig down and say, well, it's definitely because of this reason and this okay. reason. And I think that's really important to point out. This is a complex thing. It's a yes. much bigger, wider, complex issue. Um, and one that... Um, can really upset people when you talk mm, about mm. it, can cause a lot of conflict with people. And so it can be a little bit of a, a really tentative subject to approach, especially okay. with people within your department. Right. Especially <laughs> if you work in um, you know, an all-male department or an all-female department, this can sometimes be a bit of an area of caution. Um, and so I think the first thing is to just be open about it. So have your staff meetings and mm. start talking about this mm. issue, because it is an issue. How can we make our lessons more inclusive? And so I think... So we shouldn't just take this as a given and say, girls don't want to study computing at GCSE or A-level. That's fine. They're entitled to that, that position. We shouldn't be worrying about doing something about this. Well, I think we should be worried, mm. because it feels like that if there aren't enough people uh, who consume technology who are also creating technology mm. and that's a problem mm. um, and so I think in the past girls have been kind of pushed off of computer science or they often have negative stereotypical images of what it's okay. like to be a computer scientist but I think it's also important to, to remind people and remind children that the reason that we're teaching computing is not because we want every person to grow up and be a computer scientist no. And that the actual point here is that we're teaching computer science because it can benefit so many other subjects. Yes. Uh, and that's really important. So I think once we accept that, um, we can actually start thinking of really inclusive things to do in the classroom. And I think um, having really good role models mm. is a great way just to start with. Because as a child, you don't know what the jobs of the future are going to look like. You also don't really understand what jobs are. You know, if you ask a, a typical 12-year-old what you want to be when you grow up, you know, professional athlete might be an answer. But no one actually really knows what it's like to do that job. No one sits there and says, you know, data analyst or <laughs> you know, projection scientist. Like, no one says those things. Mm. So mm. it's about getting a, a, a really nice experience for young people to see what careers and jobs are like. Mm. So by bringing people from the outside world of industry into the classroom right. and for, for them to see that there are all different types of people. They're not people just in lab coats, wearing glasses, with spots, bad <laughs> breath, or whatever other stereotype, stereotype you want to apply to um, computer scientists. Is there a problem with stereotyping then? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I used to do an activity with my students where I'd ask them to just describe or draw what they thought someone working in tech looked like. Mm. And the most often comments you would get are things like, well, you need to be super brainy, you're probably quite lonely, um, you might be a bit of a cat lady if you're a woman, in, particularly in technology. You know, so there are some very negative stereotypes mm. around mm. it, and we need to kind of cut through those. And role models are a great way of doing that. So who are the great role models then? Who is it that teachers ought to be telling their students about are the great women in computing? Well, I think any female computer science teacher is already a great role yes, model. Yes, of and course. We should celebrate yes. those people. And yeah. They do a great job. I think also there are sixth form girls who are taking A level or have gone to undergraduate level. Great role models. And then there are some people in industry who are doing the job. And there's some great websites that are full of um, examples of women okay. working in technology. Yeah. And we should probably look there first. I, I hate to name names in case you leave anyone out, right? <laughs> So no point. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Do you think things are getting better? Does including computing in the statutory curriculum make a difference? Does this bode well for the future? I think it bodes well for the future, yeah. yes. I think um, we're seeing uh, 
that when you introduce computer science concepts to five-year-olds, mm. that they're learning it in a way that's quite creative at the moment, it's quite interesting, and boys and girls are both doing it. So yes. by the time they get yes. to kind of 13, it, it's no longer a, a kind of gender segregation. They're kind of used to it being part of everyday life, and hopefully something that's quite cross-curricular. So they've seen it used in yeah. art, they've seen it used in science, and this is this means it's more acceptable. If they've had a positive experience of coding at primary school and at the beginning of secondary school, that might well carry them over and right. persuade them that this yes. is a thing worth studying for a prep. Have you noticed any differences in the way girls and boys tackle problems in computer? That's a really interesting question. I mean, we're very quick to kind of segregate children into these two different areas that actually different types of children learn in different ways. It's not always the case. I think if you start with an inclusive mindset mm. and think about how can I get all my students excited about this subject, that way you'll get both boys and girls without realising it. Yeah. I think we need to be careful not to try and segregate students. Right. And I think if we take that approach, well, do girls learn differently to boys? We might tend to start creating situations in which you do start segregating so them. Reinforcing potential right. stereotypes rather than doing our best to, to right. diminish those. Yeah, OK. Do you think then teachers ought to be doing more to make computing more interesting for the girls in their class? Yeah, I think right now there's a real good opportunity for all teachers to start thinking really creatively about how they're going to include all their students from all okay. diverse backgrounds. So what works with girls, um, apart from having really strong role models yeah. in the classroom, is um, creating projects where there's opportunities for collaboration, for teamwork. That, that tends to, to, to really excite girls. If there's a project that um, allows them to solve some kind of real world problem, hmm. we find that girls are just generally quite altruistic and they want to help the world in some way. If they can see that there's some big goal, they're going to help someone be able to see better or they're going to help um, with recycling, for example, then then they're normally more inspired to take the subject. But I can imagine collaborative projects and projects where there's a real-world outcome being quite appealing for boys as well in the class. Precisely, it's, yes. Yes, yes uh, it's teaching this well rather than teaching this in a particularly exactly. gendered way. Yeah. I think it's really important. It's about teaching the subject well, teaching it in an inclusive way, and that is how you'll get more girls. Mm. Tell me a little more about Geek Girl Diaries. How did this get started? So, Geek Girl Diaries is a, a it's, it's all a joy to, uh, of a thing for, that I am involved with. Um, it's always been my 20% project. Okay. And I would <laughs> advise anyone who's a teacher or any profession should always have a 20% project, right? Because it's something you can pour your passion into. Mm. And so when I was teaching at secondary school, um, I noticed that at GCSE level and then at A level, my uptake of the subject by girls was really, really poor. And so I started to think about ways in which I could improve that. And at the time, I noticed that my students weren't really using Google to search for things. They started using YouTube to search for things. My gosh, and it felt like this yes. was a really interesting way that I could yeah. perhaps bring role models to the attention of girls. Mm -hmm. So it started out as um, a way for me to interview women and record those interviews so there's somewhere where girls could access them. Mm. It's been quite difficult to find women who want to talk to me on camera. And, and it's really, I found it quite a challenge. So I just started to kind of document my learning that I was going okay. through, I was upskilling, um, so I started filming some of the projects that I was doing. Much the same way that one might on a blog. Right, but exactly. Teenagers don't read blogs, strangely enough. Yeah, so this is much yeah. more accessible because they can kind of skip bits or rewind yeah. bits and so on. Um, and so they became my diaries yeah. and, and I just continue to make videos about things I really enjoy. Um, we have a, a saying here at Raspberry Pi where, where I've made a thing and we kind of <laughs> celebrate when someone has made a thing <laughs> and, and this is my I've made a thing channel where I post all my videos. Mm. Is this something which young people themselves ought to be doing? Is the, the, the YouTube channel an appropriate place for them to be sharing their learning journey when it comes to computing? I think so. I'm really passionate about this, yeah. and, and in particular around women, in fact, of using course. YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Because only 22% of content creators on YouTube are actually women. Gosh. And that's, you think so about how just many people a coding worldwide. Thing. Right. Yeah. Just think how many people worldwide uh, make videos for YouTube, mm -hmm. and just to think that only 22% of them are women. That's, that's, mm. Why is that? And I think this is a way that you can have a positive online life by documenting the work that you're doing, whether yeah. it's in computer science or in something else. I mean, it's just a fun way to, to reach a new audience. And some of the comments I get are just mind-blowing. I even get responses in the form of other videos that teenage girls have made saying, oh, I watched your video, now I've made this thing. You just think, well, I would. It's so nice. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah.
So if a teacher is concerned about gender issues in computing, if they think that too few of their female students are going on to study this subject at GCSE or at A-level, what could they do? What are your top tips for teachers to address this? So I think top tips are, number one, be, be mindful of the problem, be aware of it, look at your data, who is taking mm -hmm. the subject, have meetings with your staff and start thinking about ways in which, you know, even if it's just activities that you're doing in your classroom, starter activities, homeworks, you know, what could you do to make it more inclusive? Um, our website for CAS Include is a great place to start. Um, if you head there, we have lots of resources and activity ideas you can do. We have a diversity conference mm. that teachers are welcome to come along to and find some tips there. Um, I definitely recommend something that worked really well for me was taking my A-level students the few girls I had, I'd ask them to come and act as TAs in my year um. eight or nine lessons so that girls who would, around that age, start to fall off would see that there are actually women that are older than them who aren't as old as me <laughs> who are interested in the subject. So that's a great way too. Carry on, thank you so much for your time. Really very good to be here. Thank you. Subscribe to Kaz TV on YouTube for the great content that we've got coming up soon.